All right, here we got my 2004 Toyota Corolla 1.8. My wife says she's got some knocking going on, so we're going to take a look and start it up and see what we can figure out here. Let's get it started up. doing here is keeping the firing, it still doesn't firing. Still pretty much there. The cylinder doesn't fire, the piston doesn't slap up the knocking sound you hear when you hear it. Sounds like it's there. Here, but you got the press on it, yeah. Maybe you don't get a knock in it. Alright, well, this really sucks, but you know what we could do? I get the buying for you. <laughs> Shouldn't say that, but I'm a Chevy man. My other car's a Chevy, so it's one of the smaller cars driving the suburban around. So we put this at 110,000 miles. Got about 118 now. And you got a knock. So, alright. I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out, verify we can get the. make sure we know which one's got the, got the slop in it. Alright, here's where we're at. I wanna try to verify which rod was shot or which, where, which cylinder the rod knock was coming from. So what I did is pulled out the plugs on each of the cylinders. You can find other videos on this, but basically what I was trying to do is push the piston back down, see if I can see if there's a little bit of slop on the downward stroke. And uh, I guess I could show you that. I wasn't able, wasn't real successful, so I'm hoping I caught this early enough that I can get in there and I'm gonna drop the pan and check it out. But what I did is I. I use a straw, I use a wooden wooden dowel, whatever you have, put a mark on it. And what I did is I, inside the wheel well here, I got, took the plastic uh, shrouding off so I could get to the crank there. And then with a wrench, I'm going to roll it over. And on this side, I'm going to watch. What you're looking to do is bring the piston up to top dead center. And you can see it as it goes up and down here. Going down. Alright, and then as it comes back up, what you want to do is just get to the top and start the downward stroke. Here it comes up. Alright, and start to go back down there. And what I'll do is take a screwdriver or what I got is a piece of piece of oak I had laying around. Right, put that rod or whatever you have, a screwdriver, I got a, like I said, a piece of oak. And what you're looking to do is push down on the piston 
and then hopefully what you'll hear is a little bit of slap as it as it moves but I'm not getting that I was hoping to see there's a little more slop in there I could verify it but if you push down what you'll do is you'll you'll hear that piston slap down against the bottom side of that if that bearing is shot it'll move around a little bit but can't really hear it so hoping that's a good thing I'm gonna drop the oil pan and take a look on the inside and see what the bearings look like Let's take a look underneath here, see what we got. Let's see if we can drop that oil pan down. I'm not going to get into all the details about pulling all the bolts off and figure that out. Got to pull off the shrouding here. Make it easier to work. A couple of bolts on that. Let's see what we got. Drop the oil pan down. Bring it out, see what it looks like. All right, let's see where we're at here. We dropped the oil pan down. We definitely could tell. We got metal fragments in there. The bottom of the oil pan. You see any of that stuff? It's not good. Let's take a look and see what we got up here. It looks real bad, but let's take a, take a look here. See if I can get a... We can get a better idea here. Let me see now if I can get a better grip on this. Turn the radio off. Oh, yeah, you know, you hear that thump. That's the knock. while I'm holding the camera. I might definitely hear it. Alright, well, I'm gonna get myself a 10 millimeter 12 point socket to take this off. I'll take a look at that bearing there and see what she looks like. Well, there's the bearing. That's the cam actually. Here's the bearing over here. Get a good picture of that thing in that shot. Uh, that sucks. That's the other side of it here. Let's see. Should look nice and shiny. Absolutely not what that looks like. So, let's take a look and see if we can, I don't know if I'm going to really clean that up or not. It doesn't look really scored, but. Alright, let's see where we're at here. What we've done so far is we pulled off that first connecting rod. Get a look at that bearing. So there was, bearing was shot, and there was probably a, good amount of bearing that was stuck to the journal but using some real fine sandpaper 600 600 grit paper what I did is was able to get most of that metal removed off that so the journals looks like it's in good shape it's not it's not pitted not scratched up too bad just minor scratches but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, gonna, gonna polish that up and I'll show you how to do that to something I learned back in metal shop or Actually, it was yeah, it's a good picture there, but back in auto mechanics, back, I don't want to say how long ago because I'll date myself here, but I'd say it's a little old school technique. And uh, we'll shine that thing up. What I'm going to do is I use 600 grit 
wet sanding. I'm gonna gonna use a thousand. I'll probably even go fifteen hundred and two thousand on it just to get it polished up real good, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. I'll show you the technique. It's not rocket science, but it's just uh, using a, a piece of piece of leather, flat piece of leather, or a piece of shoelace. I think I got a shoelace I can use. And I'll show you how we just kind of wrap that around them a few times just to keep constant pressure. Try to keep it from round without, you know, you can you can take a piece of paper, which is how I cleaned it up so far, is just wrapping a piece of paper around it and pulling it around. But you can you can see, I'll, I'll rotate it, but you can see it's, it's really in, not in bad shape. So I think I'm going to get lucky with this one. And uh, I pulled off the other covers. I put them back on because I was rotating it to uh, get work on there. I, I just got them on there hand tight on the other ones, but they all look okay. I'm going to change those anyway. While I'm changing them, I've ordered the right bearings from uh, Toyota, so I got those coming. Um, looking at the numbers that are on the, the connecting, on the, uh, on the connecting rods, they each have a number with Toyota. And uh, I'll show you what that is, but each of the connecting rods on the bottom cap, there's a number. Let's see this one here. You can see that number two. And each of them have a number. And then the back of the bearing has a number as well. Which I don't have laying right here, but uh, it also had a number two. So that bearing is what they call marked with two. So when you look it up for Toyota, you'll see. Uh, they have, I think, Mark for this particular car. They have Mark one through three. Uh, what I have is is two twos and two threes. So that's what I've ordered. Um, you know, once I get the new ones, I'll actually mount them with the plastic gauge and check them, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully they're okay. I can use those without having to change and go to a different size. But we'll cross that bridge when it comes. All right. So let me get uh, let me get these polished up, and we'll see what they look like. All right, so what I've done here is I've got this wet sandpaper, 600, 600 grit paper, wrapped around there, and I've got it sprayed up good with WD-40, give it a lubricant there. And with the shoelace, I just kind of work it back and forth, letting the shoelace kind of hit a different spot every time I go around, go around enough to, to get it to rotate smoothly, kind of polish that up. Like I said, I've got, this is 600, I'm going to do, if I had 800, I'd do 800 too, but I, I'm going to go right to 1,000 and then work that a little longer. I've got 1,500, 2,000, I'll polish this up good and see what it looks like. It's basically... Not a lot of pressure on it. You don't want to. You don't overdo it. You want to let the let the sandpaper do the work. I'm going to do this for for this guy, and I'll probably the other ones are in really decent shape, but I'll probably polish them up with the with the 15 and 2000 just to just to get them nice and nice and clean. See what that looks like. It's a little hard to a little hard to get a good focus on that, but let me get uh let me get the other the other paper on there and this shined up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Alright, so we've got this polished up. I like I said I was gonna give it a shot with thousand, fifteen hundred and two thousand grit paper. It's kinda hard to get this thing focused, but I'll see if I can get you a good look at it without too much glare. Pretty close to it there. You can, you can see. Just 
dust on there, I think. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this thing turned around and we can get a good look at it, because it's the first time I'm looking at it too up close. See it a hell of a lot better with the camera. <laughs> Can't my eyes nowadays. Make sure I don't hit that piston rod up there turning it. Connecting rod. I don't want to smack it and put a put a put a mark in it. You can see it looks pretty good. All the way around there. on the camera or not, but you can see there's a glare there. Let me try to turn it off, see if we can get a better, actually I won't get a better look up in that, in that cam with the light off. That's a good idea. It's good that it's all nice and shiny like that. Pretty damn good, considering you know, it had all that crap all over it. All right, so sorry about the camera booming here. I'm trying to get you a good picture. It all nice and polished up, but in the meantime, I'm probably making you seasick looking at it. All right, so anyway, we got that polished up. I think that's gonna work out well. At least it got cleaned up. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other three. We'll see about number four. It's going to be a little trickier back there because we got to work a little tighter space to work, but I think I can get to it. All right. Take a little better look, but that's, a, that's where we're at right now. All right, here's a look at... Just took off the cap off number two. Here's a look at the journal off number two. Bearing itself was in good shape, no sign of wear. Journal itself is nice and clean. No uh no scratches, no uh no metal left on it. So we're just gonna go ahead and polish this one up. It's, like I said, it's in pretty good shape. There's some some lines on it though, but there's nothing you can feel. It's just uh nothing I think it'll polish right out, so we're gonna go ahead and polish it up and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Alright, there's number two, all cleaned and polished up. So we can get a little shine on him. Came out nice, like brandy new. Alright, I'm gonna move on. Get number three cleaned up, polished up. One thing to keep in mind, so just to give you a hint what I'm doing here is I'm working by myself, but you can see I got the connecting rod disconnected and pushed up out of the way there while I was polishing it up. What I'm doing is I'm Hooking that connecting rod back up so that it doesn't. I don't want. I don't want to be turning the cam and have the connecting rod get slammed into the journal I just cleaned up. I'm taking out the bearing and I'm wrapping a piece of electrical tape inside out around the journal so the sticky sides out, and then wrapping another one around so the sticky sides in, to kind of just to protect it while I uh, polish them all up because. I don't want to be turning the cam and then have a connecting rod bang into it, so that's what I did here on number one. I just uh, put some electric tape around it, like I said, put the cap back on, put the screws in, and I'm going to do the same thing on the next one while I'm waiting on my new bearings to come. So I ordered them, and they're not here yet. It's supposed to have shipped, but didn't. But what are you going to do? So let me get this one connected up, and then I'll 
take number three down and polish it up. Just another hint before, like I said, I'm working alone here, so what I do is I got a piece of oak. I'm going to go up there and push that cylinder back down. I'm going to push it down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this cam so the journal's a little bit out of the way. Then I'm going to push that connecting rod down from the top side on the piston with a piece of wood. And as it comes down, I'm going to come down and check it. And then it's close enough I can grab it with my finger. And then I'll reach up there and pull it down to connect it. Because after you polish that thing up nice, the last thing you want to do is push that connecting rod down and booger it up there. Put a nick in it or put a mark in it and something you gotta you got to worry about getting out. All right. We'll see how it comes out. All right, we just popped the cap off number three. Number three looks just as good as number two. Let's see if I can get a zoomed in here, a little clearer. Uh, a little hard to tell with the lighting, but looks just as good. So let's pull the bearing off. Let's pull the bearing off the top side. Let's see if I can do this. But what I'm what I'm doing here, just to give you an idea, so trying to be careful and not to not to scratch up the journal with a screwdriver when I pop out that bearing what I've got I can find it here a little plastic it's actually a little soldering tool and uh, it's used for you know, electronics but it's basically plastic and you can use wood um, but what I'm trying to do is I'll roll off that bearing without boogering up the journal and that is a technical term too by the way and boogering up um, so if I could do this and I could be able to get the light in there while I'm giving you a good idea but anyway what I'm doing is using this tool just to push the bearing around. I don't want to put anything metal in there and scratch it. It seems to be working out fine, but I can't do it with the camera in the way because I can't see what the hell I'm doing. But just give you an idea. It's actually just a little plastic tool. It's got a flat end on one side like a screwdriver and a little point on the other. But right in the inside of the in that bearing where that groove is, you can just get it in there enough to enough to pop it and push it and slide and then, and then roll it around the roll it around. I'll see if I can get a better angle on it here. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm working on the far side. What I'm going to do is get this tool right up in there next to the next to the bearing right on the outside. Let me get it right there on the lip. lip right there. Let's see if I can just push it to come around. Hopefully it's not stuck in there. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it came down on came down on this side. I can reach up in there and grab it. Again, that's in pretty decent shape. All right, there's number three, all, all cleaned up, nice, all polished up. Looks pretty good. All right, again, I'm going to wrap this with the electrical tape, inside out. Of course, some of you are saying, "My, why won't you wrap it inside out?" Well, I don't want the adhesive to get stuck on the journal. I'm worried about having to clean it off after I get the bearing. So. Like I said, I'm going to wrap one around with the adhesive out, and then another one inside with the adhesive in, just to protect that bearing as I as I spin it to get to number four. 
which I haven't been talking about too much because number four is going to be a pain in the ass to get to with this engine support here. So, I don't got to figure that out yet. It's gonna, we can get to it, it's going to be a little harder. That's the job for tomorrow. So, we're going to put this guy back together and call it a night. We'll see how number four makes out tomorrow night. Alright, we're back. Just dropped number four's cap here. Not thrilled at what I found here. It looks like we just had some wear starting to occur there. See if I can get that a little bit better. It's tough to focus on there, but so that was off the bottom of the bearing. We get the top one here. I already popped it loose out of the connecting rod there. Alright. And same thing. Let's see if I can get a good look at the journal. We should be able to polish this up, same as we did the other ones. It's really hard to get it up in there. Let's take a take take it, polish it, see how it, see how it looks after we clean it up. Not too bad getting it out of there with this engine support in the way, but as you can see, you don't have a lot of room to work there. So it'll be a little, a little trickier to get the get it polished up. But I think we'll get it. If there's anything that's real tricky, I'll show it to you. But it doesn't look too bad. All right, so I got number four cleaned up. The only thing that was a little tricky was getting hands in here. So what I had done is. Got a pipe cleaner here and kind of wrapped it around a journal like this just to get it up in there to get the shoelace through. Because, like I said, there's not a lot of room for your hands working here. At least with this, I can get that up, wrap the shoelace around it, and then just pull it through. And then I was able to, to get this wrapped around again and polish it up. So that was the only tricky part was just getting the shoelace around. Other than that, once I had it in there, it was enough room to get it get it worked. So, you know, I polished it up with. You see what it looks like. All right, so I can get a better look there, but got it all cleaned up, nice, polished up. Alright, so next step here is to get the plastic gauge and get a new bearing on there, see what it looks like. Alright, we got the plastic gauge on there. Looks like. All right, we're putting number three on here now. This is the last one. I had to wait for uh, number three. The first bearing I got was opened and scratched, so I had to send it back and get another one. It's always the way it is, but here's the cap that was in there. You see, that's got 
number three. They're all written on the back side. I had happened to have two twos and two threes. I haven't gotten to a lot on the assembly of this, but I'll show you this one just so you got it. This is this this mark is is uh, on the bottom of the cap. You notice on all of them. Um, they all face the same way, in this case the front of the engine, so when they come down you want to make sure you put them the same way. Um, let's see if I can show you one. Like I said, I haven't shown you a lot of the assembly. I figure there's plenty of videos on that, but I'll show you I'll show you this one. Push the connecting rod down a little bit. I clean the inside. You want to get that you know, oil free as you can. You don't want to oil the back of the bearing. You don't want it to slip. There's a chance that you could spin a bearing. So let me get a little lubricant. I'm using, uh, it's like an STP, it's an oil treatment, this one's from Advanced Advanced Auto, but it's basically STP, just, uh, put the, just on the bearing side. Alright, and then there's a, there's a little groove on the bearing, up on the connecting rod, you got the same thing, you got a groove, that's where you got to fit that into. I push the connecting rod a little bit down. I turn the cam uh, crank, uh, yeah, turn the crankshaft a little bit to the side so I can get it a little better on the connecting rod. All right, so I'm going to get that in. I'm going to push the other side up, holding this side where it is. You want to get them even with the connecting connecting rod. So I'll get this side in first, and I'll hold it in place. And uh, push the other side up flush. Okay. Uh, the bearing's up in there. It's flush on both sides. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm trying to get a little bit focused. I don't know how the light is up there, but right here is even. Same on the other side here. It's, it's even. So I'm going to push the connecting rod back up. I'm going to turn the crankshaft. I want to push it up far enough so it doesn't hit the journal when I spin it. You just push it up and then slide it over. Make sure you got clearance for the journal. And I'm going to turn the you always want to turn it if you can same direction as the rotation of the engine I'm just backing it up a little bit I don't want to spin all the way over and I'm going to connect settle it right above the connecting rod so that when I go for the top because I'm working by myself here I push the connecting rod down I can, I can center it over it and just, just ease it down. You don't want to slam it down the connecting rod and slam it into the journal and possibly mark it up. Before I do that, I'm just going to take the same lubricant and lubricate the journal. Before I push the bearing down onto it. I'm not going to lubricate the bottom of the journal too much because I want to throw a piece of plastic gauge in there and check it out. top and using that piece of wood push that connecting rod down a little bit once I get it seated on top I'll show you how you connect it up and use the plastic gauge all right I've got the connecting rod pushed down against the journal 
what I did is I have this little plastic tool I showed you earlier when I popped the bearings out I put it up into the hole where the bolt goes on the connecting rod and I just used a piece of rag in here to hold it apart so when it was held it held it across to the side so when I pushed down from the top I got it you know centered right on top of the journal all right so that's in there uh, I just cleaned it up wiped it out with a rag after I was done cleaning it up earlier I used some air just to blow it out make sure there was nothing in there all right I'm gonna put the bearing on the other side here like I mentioned I'm not gonna put any oil on this side because I'm gonna measure it with the plastic gauge but same thing you've got the little notch here in the in the cap all right same thing I wiped out both sides make sure make sure this is wiped out dry wiped off the back of the bearing make sure it's clean and I'm gonna insert the bearing into the cap line it up with that slot and push up the other side all right, make sure again it's flush on both sides it's flush here What I usually do is just make sure it's in the center of the cap. On both sides is the same distance. Usually when they go in, they'll go in fairly straight, and then when you connect it up, it'll it'll straighten out. All right, like I said, I'm gonna get a piece of plastic gauge. Usually you'd be working with the engine out of the car. You put the plastic gauge on the journal, lay it across here. In this case, I'm gonna lay it across the the bearing and then put it up. Put it up easily, so let me get that on there and I'll show you. All right, I got the piece of plastic gauge cut. You want to cut it just short of the bearing. Let's see if I can show this to you without dropping it. I put a little bit of STP on there just to hold it in place so I could show it to you. But just lay it right across the bottom of the bearing, straight across the bottom. And what I want to do is put the cap up. Pull it in place. And get the bolts in there. I'm going to torque these up. The requirement is for torque on these, on this engine, on these connecting rod caps. It's 15 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. So I'm going to get the torque wrench out. I set it to 15. I already did the other ones. I'm going to set them to 15 and then 90 degrees. So that's another quarter turn. Again, my 12 point socket took them off with same number 10. bit each side you want to bring it up smooth bring it up together okay broke there the torque that's 15 right there is the other one and what I'm gonna do is you can just mark them just put a little bit of crayon or chalk on the one side right here so since it's easy to 90 degrees is an easy one but so when I take it down you can see how far I turned it now I'm gonna use a regular socket I don't use the torque wrench when I go on another quarter turn let me see if I can bring this off a little bit back it down you might be able to see all right I get the regular wrench now I'm gonna put this on and about 90 degrees. Alright, so I'll set it here and then it's turn it 90 degrees. Same thing on this one. Okay. So now you'll see, it's a little hard to see that mark here and, and here. Now they're both 90 degrees, so that's 15 and 90. Take it down now and take a look at the plastic gauge.
see the plastic gauge stuck on the journal there. So I can get it focused in. All right, then right on the plastic gauge itself, what I'm, I didn't tell you, but I'm using the green plastic gauge because this is from 0.001 to 0.003. The oil clearance for this engine is 0.0011 to 0.0024. So then I'll cut a little gauge off. You take the little plastic gauge and you, you cut it. You cut it off. That gives you a little section to work with. But so you see, you put it right up here. So I can get that focused for you. I got a little closer here. Let me move it up and get a little closer. You see the numbers. All right, a little closer there. If I block the light, you can see the numbers. So, what you do is you use the plastic gauge, put it up there to the market left, and you measure it. You can see that it's 0 0.0015, slightly smaller. 0 0.002 is just about on it. So, basically, what that tells you is your clearance is between 0 0.0015. 0.002. And like I said, the specs for this one are 0.0024, so we're slightly smaller than 002. Slightly smaller on that gauge from 0015, so we're perfect. Alright, so now I'm going to take this, clean this plastic gauge back off. Get some cleaner, clean that off. And I'll torque it up again, put that cap back on the same way we just did. Put that bearing cap back on and torque it back up with the 15 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. That'll finish this one up. Alright, the only thing I'm doing, and you could debate it whether you want to or not, but I put a little Loctite on the threads and the bolts when I put them in there. It's not permanent, but it'll hold it from coming loose if there's any possibility of that. Alright, I'm going to finish that up. Alright, I lubricated up this journal. Lubricated up this side of the bearing. Got all the plexi, uh, plastic gauge off there. I'm going to go ahead and put this together. Basically, like I said, I'm going to do this the same. Torque it up 15 foot pounds. And then, like I said, I put on the Loctite on one side and I put a little oil or STP right around the head just to keep it lubricated. Snug them up, 15 foot, pounds, do the same thing I did before, I'm just going to mark them, just so you can see. And 90 degrees on that. Alright, you can see now, again, marked it 90 degrees. So that guy's torqued up in there. Alright. I think it should be good. Everybody's up in there, everybody's happy. Current's alright. Alright. 
All right, everybody's good now in here. All torqued up. I took some uh, razor blade and I cleaned off this old gasket. And then I took some 2,000 grit paper, cleaned this up. I'm going to take some alcohol, clean it up before I put the new gasket on here. I guess I could show you that. Wait, before I do that, I got to go ahead and put this oil pump. I took off earlier. Took off the uh, extension that brings the pump down into the bottom of the pan. I'll put that back on now. I just wanted to show you one more thing before I put this back up. Since the uh, we had metal fragments in the pan, we had a couple in here against the screen. So when you, if you do, make sure you clean this thing up real good. I squirted some very clean down in there, and then used some compressed air and blew it out real good. And, got everything out of here so it's nice and clean so I go ahead and put this thing back up here um, the gasket's still here metal gaskets in good shape I'm gonna reuse it so just wanted to tell you make sure you do get any get any uh, metal shavings out of there before you put it back up all right I got the oil plant all cleaned up got all the muck up out of there that was in there all the fragments blew it out Cleaned all the edges off with alcohol. I'm gonna go ahead and using the Permatex Black. It's the maximum oil resist gasket maker. That's what was on here. So rather than putting on a pre-made gasket, I'm gonna go ahead and make one on there. So what you do, is gonna put a 16th to a quarter inch bead right down. You wanna make sure you come to the inside of all any any bolt holes. I'll put a bead on the outside too, but always make sure you got at least any inside so you don't have a leak around the hole and then uh, we'll get it set up in there according to this black um, you get it let it set up uh, hand tight so put it up there hand tight everything and then uh, let it dry for an hour and then torque it down and then let it sit for 24 hours so that's what I'm gonna do Go ahead and get this bead up here and I'll let you know how it looks. Alright, so now we've got gasket material all around the flange. I'm go ahead and get it up in there. Get it hand tight. This particular one's got two studs to use to line it up and get it get it set up in there and then you can go around and start putting the bolts in. So it's easier than trying to have to put two pieces cut off screws in there to line it up, which is where you can do it too, but so this has got two studs in there. And we'll go ahead and start working these in. Hand tight. All right, I'm gonna get these some of these put in all around and get them hand tightened up, and then we're gonna let it sit. And then we'll go from there. All right, we'll see ya. All right, we got the oil pan back up in there. Let it sit for an hour, and then I torqued it up. Torque requirements on this are 80 inch pounds. So all the bolts are tightened up. You can see a little bit of the RTV oozed out there, which is what it's supposed to do. Once back there, a little bit tricky to get to, but uh, got a little uh, swivel head. I was able to get in there from the other side and get those torqued up too. So everything's back together here. And let it sit 24 hours. And tomorrow, I'll throw some oil in. 
get this baby started up. Hopefully everything's going to be good. Alright, it's been 24 hours, so oil pan set up. Just filled it full of oil, start her up, sounds good. It looks like uh, for now everything's in good shape. So, sum everything up if you got a knock on your connecting rod and you notice it pretty quickly, it doesn't, doesn't do any damage. You can get it cleaned up, place the bearings, hopefully get a lot of miles out of her. Let's get this thing started up. You can hear how she sounds now. Alright, it's a beautiful thing. No more knock. It's a beautiful thing. Alright, thanks for checking out the video. Hope it was helpful. Any feedback, positive, negative, doesn't matter, I don't really care. If you got any questions, I'll answer them for you. Go ahead and leave them. Take care.